Welcome back to Oracle of Seasons. Today we'll be actually making it to the point of the game, the primary gimmick. But until then, we need to destroy this guy's house. Yeah, primary gimmick is property damage. It's just for a gaseous seed, though. Doesn't feel like there's a lot of really big secrets. For the most part, you're gonna get rings and gaseous seeds. Yeah. It is seasons, after all. It's more about the action, the fun. Oh, this guy. Right. He's a wandering musician. Yeah, so instead of Ralph, we get this, like, super chill bard guy who just kind of hangs out every once in a while. We meet him, like, four or five times, and that's about it. Yeah. He has no real stake in the life of Din. He falls asleep really fast. <laughs> yeah. He has a massive cold. Alright, so, we finished a dungeon, but the seasons are- oh god, it's this place. The seasons are all out of whack, and we gotta find a way to get that under control. And until I do that, I can't get that hard piece. This music is familiar. As is that man. Hey, buddy. It's a guy who gets really mad about that dog in Majora's Mask. Jump up and get down! <laughs> now, we've been seeing these stumps just everywhere. And wasn't Din dancing on one in the intro? She was. That's right. Ooh, who's this? Why, she's beautiful! For a mushroom with eyeballs. Hey, look at that bow. And it looks like she has a ladle for an arm. So, we're being introduced to a new race in the Zelda universe. So far, this is the only game they've turned up in. I think it'd be neat to call back to them again, but, you know. They've got an interesting... I, I guess, an interesting thing about them. They, they live in a cool place, I think. Although, it is a little boring in this game. But it has potential, I think. How we get there is a little boring, too. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of times with these guys that we have to do a sort of chase sequence. We have to hide behind the geometry, just trees in this case, keep that person from seeing us, so that we can follow them to wherever... Uh, it's it's really creepy, we have to follow them to their home. Creep stalking. Ooh, she almost caught you. Oh no, they tricked me! Oh, she got you. Yeah, that last one's kind of a gotcha. She comes back into the screen. Well, now I gotta go all the way back. But I'm, I'm intrigued by that message that said, warning like-likes. It's just this one screen filled with like-likes. Yeah, and all in all, they're not that dangerous. No. I don't even think I have a shield yet. Speaking of danger... Maybe I do, but I never use it, so... It's Maple again. Down she goes. Oh, red potion, nice. Well, I'm not getting that potion. No. Go for the money. Now, in the Lynx game of Seasons, she turns up more often anyway. I think I have the Maple Ring, or at least I get one. Yeah, I have it right now. Yeah, you're wearing it. So she turns up a lot. I get really sick of her. <laughs> Yeah, you probably take that ring off. I do eventually. She's a witch. She's walking on the grass. She got eaten by weeds. No, there's a teleporter. Welcome to hell. Go to hell. I did. It's full of monks. They're shy. This is Sabrosia. It's a world filled with lava, and the Sabrosians are just sort of people covered in cloaks. You don't really see what they look like underneath. They do have limbs, but you only really see it in, like, one situation.
There's not a whole lot going on here, but we do come back here multiple times and in different locations. And as we get the various dungeon items, we'll be able to enter different places in Sabrosia. Yeah, Sabrosia plays a pretty key part throughout the whole game. You go back to it every once in a while. But they've got a dancing minigame too, just like the Gorons. <laughs> I like the little pose on them. Little flare. This is a little more difficult than the one in Ages, but I like it a little more. Yeah, you gotta keep up with these guys. They bump into you, you're done. I really like the indoor theme for Sabrosia. What? You're terrible. It took me a couple tries. Have you learned nothing from the Goron Dance Master? No, because the game is different. There we go. These guys got some pretty weird music to dance to. Yeah. He does make it look like he's just stuck on that platform and he's hitting an invisible wall. Everybody conga. And it's not quite matching the rhythm of the music. No. This one's a little harder, but I think I prefer the Goron's dancing game. Our first prize, it's a boomerang. Hey, it only took us two games to get it. It's pretty useful in this game. It stops enemies in their tracks. Yeah. Even the most difficult enemies. So you can actually get it in ages, too. I think I talked about that. Yeah. It's an optional item, though, there. Now, the currency in Sabrosia is ore chunks. We can just dig them up out of the ground, cut them in grass. It's the same as rupees. That prize there is actually Dimitri's flute in the unlinked game. The reason that I don't get it here is because since I've linked it from ages where Dimitri was my animal friend in that game, all the animal friends return, I'm gonna get Dimitri's flute in this game anyway. Yeah, Dimitri's just gonna show up and give it to you. Like, hey, you dropped this. Which is cool with me, because he's the best. Absolutely. At the temple. If, if that's what you want to call it. Everybody puts the quotes around Temple. Like, they're not supposed to know that it's called that or something. I think it's because they're not impressed. They're like, the Temple. <laughs> Do be careful. That is lava. It will hurt you. Yeah, all of this will hurt you. And also, if you're digging around for ore chunks, depending on where you're facing, you could very easily just pop it into lava and lose it. You can also dig up a fire monster. If I had a shovel. We'll get a shovel. It's like they're teasing you. Boy, wouldn't it be great if you could dig for some ore chunks? Look at all these shovels we've got. But we can't have them. No, these, these are reserved. You can't have these. It's important to note the location of this building. We do come here a couple of times. The smithy is weird. They only help you for particular situations. And you need to say the right thing in order to get them to help. Yeah, they're subs. They like to be demeaned. Hey, if you had a shovel, I mean, come on. He just hands you a pair of teeth. <laughs> Dig it up. Nothing over there. You can probably dig there for something, but I never did. But if you remember in the intro, we saw General Alnox knock the Temple of Seasons into the ground. Sabrosia is actually an underground area, and this is where the Temple of Seasons ended up. Yep. There's two things we need to get here before we leave. Winter wasn't bad around here. I mean, I guess it's a sign of global warming, but there wasn't that much raining. We're getting it all now in these last week. Shut up, I got dumped under feet of snow. <laughs> Can't get in there. 
Hey, everything's locked. Yeah. Everything except for two doors. Right, so this temple has four corners. There's four seasons. You're probably going to be coming back here at least three other times. And in order to utilize the power of the seasons, we need this. The Rod of Seasons. I'm going to transform you into Sailor Moon. Like the Harp of Ages for Ages, this is our gimmick item of seasons. One that allows for a good bit more creativity in the game layout. Yeah, I like this. The season gimmick is really cool. I feel like the time gimmick was played out because there's already been Ocarina of Time. And then, you know, Link to the Past played a lot with the Dark World, Light World, Two Worlds kind of thing. I like the seasons because it gives you four unique different ways to look at the landscape. Yeah. And ways to solve problems. It's kind of cool. I almost wish that seasons were the more puzzle-heavy one, because I feel like you get a lot more out of puzzles with the seasons. Yeah, kind of a wasted opportunity, I guess. Oh well. We can't use the Rod of Seasons yet until we've powered it up with the power of the seasons. I mean, you can swing it around ineffectively. Yeah, it's not a weapon. It doesn't hit anything. But to start, we're just getting the Spirit of Winter. It's Navi. Hey, listen. I can help you. I'm very cold. Please help me. There we are, and as we go through the game, we'll be getting the other three seasons. That's right. The other cool part about this gimmick item for this game is you don't have to switch seasons. You just swing the rod. So when you get the different seasons, it's not like the harp where you had to switch the song all the time in that annoying little sub menu. Yeah. It's great. Hey, buddy, how's hell? Can, can you go for me? I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. McFly, you fool. Well, it's already winter. Somehow. Can't use our new gimmick now. Oh, well, we're going to get a tutorial. That's it. I don't trust you to use this correctly. I can't go more than four screens without falling asleep. Please help me. I have a real problem. But man, I tell you, I just cannot sleep in summer. If only someone could help me! So the key to the power of the Rod of Seasons is deforestation. That's right. Perhaps you'll go again. Perhaps three times. Now all these stumps we've been saying around is where we use the Rod of Seasons. Hop up, press the button, and change the season. Easy peasy. It's pretty quick, but I have noticed if you don't know exactly what season you need to do, you could very easily change the season, go look around, realize you're stuck someplace because you see that wall of snow or some other dumb reason, and then have to backtrack all the way to the stump and do it multiple times. Yeah. It starts out easy, later on things start getting contrived. I don't remember if the map shows you stumps or not, like if you try to find a stump. I don't know. I feel like it should. They're fairly plentiful. So there's a couple elements of winter along with the walls of snow and the frozen ice. Those dead trees, they open up paths in winter because there aren't leaves blocking the way. Please take this ring off. I'm already <laughs> tired of her. Eventually, I just start cutting her out of the video. Ooh, you're not getting that ring. She really injured me. Oh god, my spine! Aw, oh, she ripped you off that time. Look at this dude. God damn it. 
Ah, oh, he's one of the reverse fortune guys. Oh, he didn't charge you that much. Not too much. Feels like there's a lot more of those guys in this game than in ages. I think because this is the callback game. Probably. Chimney sweep. Clearly, we need to change it to fall and make a huge pile of leaves. Clearly, we need Dick Van Dyke. Was that Dick Van Dyke? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Making sure my reference game is still on point. It's cool that the enemies stay consistent between the seasons. It's only when you leave an area that things reset. Oh, God. For Roar? Right. She just likes the hairstyle. She saw it in Goddess Magazine. There it is. Hey, we got the best weapon in the game. Really useful against one enemy. But also for making money. Now we can go down to Subrosia and show all those jerky Subrosian what for. Someday. As in, like, one or two parts. Right. So yes, of course I do a lot of digging. You can get a lot of stuff. Yeah, I like digging. A lot when I play these games. So that chest actually contains a very important item for getting into the sixth dungeon. So, not gonna be getting that for a good long while. I'll look forward to that! Oh god, I had a wife and kids! <laughs> it's okay, when you fall down a hole, you respawn when you come back into the screen. Ooh, there's the dungeon. Now the other guys were widowers, they're gone. Also for the things like maple, gasha trees, that counter for the enemies you've killed, if you knock them down a hole, they don't count. Right, you actually have to kill it with your hand. Or bomb. Your bear bombs. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, I always I know it's supposed to be exciting for you. It's like that's nice, but I, I always read it in a oh that's nice. Jesus oh, God Christ! It. <laughs> hey, you missed me yet? Hey, McFly, where are you? Hey, hey, oh. Sh of course, there's nothing good in this one. My leg. Yeah. Oh no, she stole my three seeds. Got another one of those rocks, so we got the power bracelet coming back later. That's right. A lot of items share between the two games. There's a couple differences. A couple differences in a couple of cases where it's sort of the same item, but it just has different functionality. Yeah. Like, for example, the way you shoot seeds in this game is different. And in my opinion, less exciting. A little bit, yeah. So I did get lost for a little bit. What I had to do, I had to come back here and dig through those snow piles to get to the next area. Mystery seeds, and people want these. It's sort of a weird thing I've noticed. Ages have a lot more of a progression to it. In seasons, they just give you a lot of the seeds very quickly. Yeah. Once again, it's more the action game. It's just kind of... Walk around, collect stuff, beat enemies, solve dungeons. The story in this game, I believe, is a little weaker. It's considerably so. Like, Din doesn't seem to exist in this world. Not like Nehru did, at least. Like, Nehru had Ralph, who cared about her. Din is just, she was dancing, and then a traveling troop of knights in disguise came up and said, Hey, you're coming with us. And that's it. It's like, nobody actually knows her. And also, Onox just sucks as a villain, because that intro cutscene, and when we fight him at the end of the game, that's the only time you see him. Yeah, it's not as cool, but hey, I do like this game for other reasons. And that is a very happy-looking dungeon. It cannot wait. Please come inside me. I didn't mean that to be dirty. 